Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Over Easy episode 17. I hope you are doing well. My name is Manny, in case you're new here, or welcome back. Hello. Let's get right into a rose, bud, and thorn. Today's episode is going to be pretty chill. Today, my thorn is that I have, I seldomly, like maybe every couple months or so, get these headaches. I actually think it has to do with my period, to be honest. It's probably something related to that because I'm on my period right now. But I get these headaches that feel like they are an aneurysm. And I don't know what an aneurysm feels like, but I say that because it's like a really specific point in my head. It feels like in my brain that hurts. It's not like, you know, when you get a headache because you haven't drank enough water or you haven't eaten, it's like kind of all over your head. You know, it just kind of feels like all over pain. But when I get these headaches, when I'm on my period, they are literally like a specific point in my head is being pinched and it doesn't feel good. So that's been me today. I don't appreciate it at all. Really sucks. And I honestly wish it would leave. I did take Advil, but um, it didn't really work. And I don't really want to take another one just because I don't like taking a lot of Advil. But yeah, that's my thorn for the day. My rose my rose is that this week is a chill week because for the last three weeks I've had midterms and it's been really stressful and this week is the one week break that I don't have midterms before reading week. I have one midterm next week and then one the week after and then it's reading week so this week is kind of my week to chill and not work so hard because I'm really tired and I'm really happy about that because I feel like midterm season it's really easy to get caught up in like constantly studying for your midterm and then you take it and then the next midterm's coming and then you just keep going and going and going it's like really hard to not get caught in that cycle so when you get a break like that in your semester like that one I'm having this week it's very nice and very relaxing okay it's really windy today I'm just looking outside my window right now and we're supposed to have like a windstorm or whatever I don't know that's what my google home told me last night and it is crazy because my window my one of my windows looks directly up at a tree that's outside my house so usually when I'm getting dressed in the morning or whatever I just look at the tree to determine what I wear it's really random but I'm just looking at it right now and it is so windy outside that's crazy and my bud my bud is okay my bud is kind of random I am looking forward to a cycling class that I have booked for this Thursday Uh, I typically like I kind of have like a love-hate relationship with cycling classes on one hand I really like them because you know I really enjoy group fitness classes for the vibes you know everyone's so motivated and you're kind of like all working together but you're also like just working out by yourself if that makes sense you know like people aren't really depending on you but it just feels like a good group atmosphere and I saw this instructor that's offering a cycle class at the gym that I go to and she had a really good review so I wanted to try her class but I also don't really love cycling classes that much I feel like every time I take a cycling class I'm reminded why I don't like them and that is because like First of all, the seat always hurts my bum, and I don't know if it's I'm not sitting right, but I always fix my bike appropriately, and it still hurts my bum every time. And also, it's just like so much cardio, and I don't love cardio, but I feel like cycling classes is the easiest way for me to do cardio. Otherwise, when I just like work out at the gym by myself, I am done in 15 minutes. I'm like, I give up, no more. Like I can so easily stop myself. Whereas like if you're in a group fitness class, like you kind of have to keep going. Like you can obviously slow down and stuff, but you know, everyone else is watching and the instructor is there. Like you kind of have to keep going in a class like that. So that's like usually the way that I will get myself to do cardio. And most of the time it is fun. Like uh, I remember the first time I did a cycling class at the gym that I go to, I had so many endorphins after and I felt so good. So yeah. I'm very excited for that. So those are my check-ins for the day. I hope you are doing well. So after last week's episode where I kind of answered some of the reflection questions that I was doing with the book that I am currently reading, which is How to Get SHIT 
Done by Erin Falconer. Her book has a few review questions at the end of every chapter, and I've been pretty much journaling with them every single day along with my like normal journaling. I thought that it might be fun just to do an entire episode dedicated to the questions that I've been answering because I really enjoy reflecting and stuff like that. And also, I feel like despite the fact that I answered these questions in the last week, I feel like my answers will change because... I don't know, the mindset that you have in the morning versus when, you know, when you're a little more awake in the afternoon, maybe a little bit different. So I thought it'd be really fun to answer some more questions and also like answering these questions yourself. You might want to try answering them as well and just thinking about what kind of goals you're setting for the long term and also who you are as an individual. Side note, this is really random, but I saw this TikTok last night where this girl was talking about the fact that she's indecisive. It was like, um... I'm not indecisive, but every time I've made a decision as a child, she always got corrected by her parents. So she's actually not an indecisive person, but she has been trained to believe that all her decisions are wrong, which is why she never makes decisions, which I thought was so scary because I was like, oh my God, that is so, first of all, accurate and also just like crazy to think of about the fact that your your upbringing, your conditioning, and your parenting choices that your parents made have so much effect on you, even up until like your later adulthood, pretty much, that like you can have these long-lasting effects of the parenting, and you can just totally shape, like, de- even though you're born with specific genetics that can change you from the next person, the way that children are brought up and are parented have such a big effect on who they will be as an individual and it is so crazy to me and also one of the biggest reasons why I don't want to have kids because it's just so scary to think about that but I th- I was watching that TikTok and I was like oh my god like that is me and um that's really scary to think about I wouldn't say that I got really corrected as a child though when I was making decisions maybe I did I can't really remember I feel like I didn't really make that many decisions as a kid. I I don't know. I think, I think actually like small decisions, my parents always let me choose what I wanted, you know, like what I want to have for lunch or whatever. But when it came to big decisions, like I would always consult my parents before, whereas now I am pretty independent and I think about the decisions that I want to make on my own before I bring it up to other people to get their opinion. Usually if I like have an opinion about something, I usually have a stance and I decide within myself first before I talk about it with other people because then I guess you're not so easily swayed by the outside influences, which is good, and you have a decision that you think is like really reflects your own thoughts. But anyways, yeah, that was a TikTok I saw yesterday that was really random. And uh, let's get into the first question. What motivates you? This is such an open-ended question that I thought was really interesting. And I kind of broke it down into different topics in my life, different categories. So what motivates me to go to the gym and work out so often is... The fact that I want to live a long and healthy life in the future and craving that feeling of endorphins and strength. Also having the time to solely work on myself. I mean, I think those are pretty self-explanatory. I think for me, the biggest one for the gym is having the time to solely work on myself because when I'm in the gym and when I'm exercising in general, I get like a different feeling that I can't really achieve anywhere else in life. And I'm just so focused on, first of all, getting your form right, doing your exercises and just working like physically that your brain cannot really handle anything else at the moment. For me, at all other points in my life, pretty much, I always have like a, I want to say like a tape running, like, you know, those like old VHS tapes. I feel like for me, I always have those kinds of like something running in the background of my brain and it's always constantly reminding me, oh, you need to do this. Oh, this thing is coming up next week. Oh, did you do this yet? Blah, 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 blah. Oh, let's replay old conversations that totally don't matter anymore. Stuff like that. My brain like is really hard to shut off and I've you know, I still meditate daily. And I think that does help focusing on your breath and even just offering yourself a space to relax and not think and just see what kind of thoughts are going through your brain is really important. So I really like meditating. But for me, when I exercise and when I go to the gym, like my brain is 
so empty. Like most of the time I cannot think about anything else. And today I was very conscious about not using my phone at the gym. I really tried not to use my phone as much because before, like between every set, I would take a rest and go on my phone, which is not great um, because then I'd go on Instagram and then I'd do whatever and message back people and like start doing work pretty much when it was my own self-care time. So today, and I think hopefully for the rest of whenever I go to the gym, I hope not to use my phone as much because it really offers me a place to think without intrusion and without obstacles in the way and also like also not think as much if that makes sense like I feel like the thinking that I do in the gym is more mindful so that's definitely a big motivating factor for me is that I can't really achieve the that kind of feeling anywhere else other than the gym okay let's keep going oh my god that took a long time to explain but for school what motivates me is potentially going to grad school getting good grades and making the most of my university experience Sometimes it's really hard to get motivated to do schoolwork because when you really get down to it, sometimes you don't even know what you're doing it for. Like obviously you're doing it so that you can graduate with a degree or whatever, but sometimes you kind of lose sight of that and you lose sight of how university plays into your long-term goals. And I've definitely related to that. That was definitely me like last week. I was like, why am I in school? I feel like every year I have a quarterly yearly crisis that I'm like I don't want to be in school anymore anymore I'm gonna drop out like what's the point like why am I even in university again and I always lose sight of why I wanted to go to university in the first place and I think it's really important to grasp that and also what really helps for me is like actually studying things that I'm interested in because then it's not as hard to motivate myself to do my schoolwork. I'm just like oh I really want to get to know more about this topic that we're doing in psych this week like that way your school work and like what you do for homework and stuff isn't so related or uh, relying on the fact that you have to be disciplined versus if you were truly interested in the topics that you're learning about like I feel like it should be it should come naturally to you when you're studying and when you want to do school work and be productive for content what motivates me is helping others with my own experiences views slash growth and others enjoying what I put out so I hate to admit it and I always want to say that you know views are not something that I look at when I'm doing content and stuff like that but to be honest I feel like when you have a number on something everyone's going to compare it um that's just how it is sometimes and I think for me especially my brain is very wired to understand numbers and stuff like that so I love like comparing things contrasting things blah 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 and I think although like views are important to me what's more important is I think like the trend of uh the type of content that I make I guess you could say and um when I see high views, I'm like, oh, people actually appreciate the content and like what I'm putting out. And that kind of motivates me to continue to make more content. What makes my day the most is when people comment on my videos or they message me on Instagram about how my content helps them or like talking about certain topics gets them to think about things that they wouldn't really think about otherwise. And that like just makes my day. Like honestly, when I get a nice DM about my content, like literally my week my month is made like I truly am so excited and so happy that you guys enjoy my content and even if it's like just one person truly so so humbling and rewarding to me I would say and uh, another thing I didn't write down that I like that I like about making content or that motivates me is like it offers me a snapshot of what my life looks like right now I've talked about this before for sure but I really appreciate like how vlogs can really put you back in that moment for me at least I can watch a vlog from last year and I like kind of am taken back and I remember like exactly all the details that happened in my life that week and I really really like that because I have a bad memory and I really like being nostalgic like that's one of my favorite things to do is look back at old stuff and remember all the good memories and stuff and vlogging is like just one way to do that and I think podcasting also offers that too because you kind of are given a snapshot of my views and my brain and how I think about things and this might change when I turn another year older or like in five years and I think it's really important to remember where you came from and how you have developed 
Lastly, for work, what motivates me is helping kiddos and making an impact on them, seeing them understand and grow, and watching them develop. I think one of the most rewarding things about working with kids is that you get to see them literally grow up right in front of your eyes, and that always makes my day. And for me, I've worked with a lot of kids for a couple of years now, and like seeing them again really like puts myself into perspective I'm like oh my god you grew up so much and like watching them grow in their math ability or their dance ability whatever it is it's like so heartwarming to see and I think like I wish when I was growing up that I had more documentation of what I was like as a child because I would I think love to look back at that and if I ever have a kid I would definitely like not put family vlogs out online because that is exploitation of your child but more so like record videos and take more photos for my own memory and for like the child's memory okay on to the next one that took a little while i can't remember if i answered this in my last podcast but one of the questions is what makes you want to quit which i think is a super interesting question uh one is when i don't feel good while or after doing something Um, this can go for anything, but I would say like for social interactions and social situations for sure. Like if that interaction or that hangout isn't giving me good vibes, isn't giving me positive energy, then like I want to go home for sure. (laughs) Uh, Not seeing growth or improvement even after lots of effort trying. I think when I was answering this question, quit also was correlated with not being motivated to do something because for sure when let's say for example I'm working on schoolwork and after putting in so many hours of work I still feel like I'm not good at something or I haven't improved that's more important is that I'm not able to improve then I feel like I want to give up because you know it feels like sometimes things are just based on innate ability and not based on being able to put in hard work so when it is that case like I feel like it's so discouraging for people who are not naturally talented at something. Like, for example, for um, finance, like I feel like some people, for me in particular, I'm like, it takes me a little while to um, get a concept and understand it. And if I were like practicing, practicing, practicing all these questions and still not able to understand, I feel like I'd just give up. But for some other people, it must come, like, it might come naturally to them. Like, you understand what they're asking for, or uh, if we're looking for present value or future value or whatever, like, I think it comes naturally for some people, and then it's, like, easier to be motivated to do it, I guess, because you're good. And my last thing is, when I'm tired and don't have enough energy to do something fully, so what I learned about myself this past year is that when I attach my name to something, like, oh, I worked on this project, oh, I was a contributor on this thing, whether it be in school or out of school, like, I helped with this group thing or whatever, I really want it to be done, like, really well because obviously when you attach your name to something like that reflects your ability and your work ethic to other people who may be looking at it and also just I think it's really important for me when I put my name on something like I guess to me it's like a part of my portfolio like I want it to be something that I'm proud of sharing with other people so if I know that I don't have enough energy to uh do something to my fullest capability and to my standard then I don't want to do it at all which is probably not the best way like sometimes things just have to be done like doing things is better than doing them perfectly if that makes sense I've definitely heard that quote before but I'm still learning I think if this more applies it definitely doesn't apply with my schoolwork for me schoolwork is not that important in terms of like getting the best grade or whatever but when I attach my name to creative projects or to um like my podcast or whatever I want to make sure that it is done to a certain standard and if it doesn't like if I can't hit that standard in the given amount of time like most of the time I just want to give up and not post at all okay next question this is really fun I like love answering these like reflective questions and basically just talking about myself because I think like I think it's so fun and that's pretty much why I wanted to start my podcast in the first place so the next question is how did your family life shape you (laughs) I was quite sarcastic with this. I think I was in a weird mood that day, but I said, first of all, my family issues gave me uh, trust issues for sure. Um, 
in a lot of different ways. And I might have talked about this in my first episode. I honestly don't even remember anymore. It feels like so long ago that I did my first episode. But there were a lot of or quite a few things that my parents did that kind of did not help with building a sense of trust. And it wasn't really their fault. There were a lot of extenuating external circumstances that contributed to them acting the way that they did. But for example, one example that I can think of that really pertains to me still is that my parents used to work like a crazy amount and they were also like glued to their job so it wasn't like they finished their nine to five and they can just go home like a lot of times they would have to cover the work of other co-workers because they are managers of their business um they would often have to stay until six or seven at night to finish their work and like just you know, just have to work a lot. And for me, um, what that resulted in for me was that as a kid, a lot of times my parents never picked me up from things because they would forget about me. Um, For example, I can think off the top of my head in elementary school, we used to do this like after school program called Cluster Club, which basically from 3.30 to 5, you would just stay after school and wait for your parents to come and pick you up just because like not every parent can come at 3.30, which is totally understandable. But I remember there was this one circumstance where... um, this one day I couldn't get picked up until like 5 30 or 6 and I felt so bad because obviously the teacher has to stay behind and wait for the student to get picked up and it's like beyond listed hours like it's beyond the hours that they're paid for and then also I think they weren't like answering their phone or whatever because they were working and it just like that constantly made me feel so like forgotten and not appreciated I guess so how that is manifested in my adult life is that when I have events and stuff like that that I have to be timely to and stuff I am so aware of it like I am overly conscious of it at this point um I think also I'm really good at remembering when things come up and I have to do things uh yeah I can't remember I had a conversation about my like with my boyfriend about this the other day he was asking like why I I can't remember what he asked but I was like my response was that my parents never picked me up as a kid and that has led me to be so aware of time and things now and I'm like not looking for a pity party like I really don't care anymore it's just like one of the ways that my family has shaped me um is just that I had to be responsible for my own obligations at a very young age. Like, for example, if I had dance class coming up, like I had to make sure that my parents, like I had to remind my parents, whoever was driving me that day, because I was worried that I wouldn't get a ride and like I wouldn't be able to go if I didn't remind them. So I would have to call them like 30 minutes before just to make sure they're coming and then like 15 minutes before, whatever, whatever, just like to make sure I have a ride to these classes and stuff like that. Okay. One other one that is not a good thing that my family did. I feel like I wrote a lot of negative things because like those are easier to pick out than the positive things. But I have a few small little bad habits that I'm really trying to break. Like when I am upset or trying to be petty. No, when I am upset, like my habit is that I try to be petty. That's like not a good thing. And I like just pout and it's really not a good time because then the person on the other end that is trying to figure out why I'm mad can't figure it out because I refuse to communicate. So that's definitely another habit that I've picked up from my family that is not good. And I really am trying to be conscious of. And I feel like if I think about things critically, I'm okay at it, but sometimes I get a little distracted and then I start being petty and it's really not good. Uh, other ways that my family life has shaped me is not having to do any chores until recently and that has been obviously a very good privilege, very nice privilege because like I've always had time to prioritize my schoolwork versus doing my laundry and stuff like that. Recently I've been doing more cooking and doing my own laundry and stuff like that so it's been taking up a little more time but I feel like I'm really lucky already that I get to live at home and there are people here to help me if if I need to that and also that I always felt secure with shelter and food um yeah it's kind of self-explanatory but I feel like a lot of people don't have that privilege and don't have that feeling so it's always important to be grateful for those kinds of things ready for the next one so the next chapter in the book that I was reading was talking about saying no to other obligations actually the chapter was really interesting because 
if you listen to my last podcast episode, I was talking about the book that I'm reading and how it's more focused on productivity for women and shaping like how to be more productive and better as a woman. So one thing that the author brought up was how women are more likely than not to be the ones to pick up little tasks in their workplace. So for example, like if you have a new batch of interns coming, like more often than not, the boss will ask women to help orient them and stuff like that and whatever. These things that take up a lot of time and are kind of expected and not really like paid extra for. So this next question is name at least three things that you'd like to say no to. I'm not going to say specifically what I wrote, but basically the gist was that I wanted to say no to extra responsibilities that are outside of my job description in the things that I do. Um, I feel like it's this is kind of also with me setting boundaries is that I'm trying, trying is the key word to be better at it and set boundaries because I've just been so busy this semester. I can't help and do things outside of my job description pretty much. So it's really important for me to be able to learn to say no to these things or else people will take it for granted and just see you as someone who is always willing to help which is not great because then you feel like you can never prioritize yourself so that's something I want to work on really badly uh, the third thing that I said I would say no to is social hangouts that don't fulfill me I feel like I am always caught off guard with the fact that some social like any social hangout is better than no social hangout basically but I feel like I want to be more picky and choosy with who I spend my time with now because uh your time is valuable obviously and also I've just like there are are one too many instances of when I've left social gatherings and I feel like I wasted my time or that I could have been doing something else and that also Like, I guess you could say it's also my perspective, like, oh, why didn't I make the most of the opportunities that are given to me and the people that I was with? But I don't know. I feel like I don't have to justify myself in that case. Like, if I don't feel good and your vibes don't, like, align with me, we're not on the same wavelength, then I don't have to be obligated to hang out with you. And I don't have to be obligated to want to hang out with you. Nothing against you. It's just that I prefer myself more. Yeah, so that's something that I'm still trying to learn. I feel like I'm better with the social hangouts thing, but definitely with like picking up extra responsibilities and stuff, it's uh, like I'm not as good at that. And because also because sometimes like these extra responsibilities can kind of be clouded as like just tasks if you enjoy your job. So for example, for my math job, like because I love that job so much, like I'm always willing to pick up extra responsibilities and like helping out with other stuff that isn't really included in my job description. But because I like that job so much, I'm willing to do it because like I'm like, oh my God, this is so fun, blah, 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 blah. But I just have to, I think I have to be careful and just remind myself that there are other things that I need to do with my time as well, especially like personal projects that often get put on the back burner. So that is just me telling myself things that I need to remember. Next question. If you had to choose three words to describe you, what would they be? I wrote, I don't really like the words that I wrote. And in the moment when I was writing them, I also didn't like the words that I wrote, but I couldn't think of anything else. I wrote wholesome, observant, and casual. I I would say wholesome is definitely one because as we've talked about last episode, I freaking love like Halloween, holidays, like just spending time with kids. I feel like I would more so say that this word is more like young, like free spirited in that like I, I feel like I don't act like an adult. I really like mesh well with kids and talking with kids and just like being wholesome. I don't know. That's like I think the way to describe me casual and observant I mean I guess they're true but like they're such lame words like I feel like it doesn't really get my vibe across if that makes sense I would definitely say I'm very casual in that I don't really see um hierarchy with others that I'm comfortable with or just with others in general I've always been brought up like with my mom 
like there was never a like hierarchy there like I know some people with their parents have like a very firm relationship where like your parents are your parent and I would definitely say that like my mom has definitely exerted parenting powers over me before too but more so the relationship that I have with my mom is very casual and like she is my sister like especially when I was super close with her um that was definitely the case and I think that is very different from a lot of other people in the way that they were brought up. So, okay, I'll tell you a story that has kind of traumatized me to this day. I was, this is when I was dating my ex. He was my boyfriend at the time. Um, And wait, that made no sense. This is when I was dating my ex. So this is a couple years ago. And I was going to go visit him because this was the point where we were doing long distance and he was at another university in Ontario and I was at UBC. So I was going to go visit him for a long weekend. I don't remember what. And I was going to go fly out to Ontario to visit him. And one thing that I had to do was like go and pick up some stuff from his parents because like obviously they didn't get to fly there and they wanted to bring him some snacks and whatever. So I said that I would bring them over in my suitcase and like bring them to him. So when I went to go pick up the snacks from his parents, I honestly do not remember at all what happened in that moment, but I'm going to guess, I'm going to say based on what happened after that I didn't really greet my ex's mom to the standard that she would like and then basically I just got in a lot of trouble for it not in the moment but after the fact so this is a really like I don't know I I still get scared of that story to this day like I really did not like that moment and I thought like retroactively reflecting on this story And the fact that I got in trouble for that, like, I understand why the mom got upset. But to me also, it like wasn't really a big deal because of the way that I was brought up and the fact that, you know, I wasn't really brought up to really formally like say hello to people like that. And I just wasn't used to it, I guess. So, yeah. And and, and, like with other friends, parents and stuff like that. I was totally okay with being like, oh, hello, auntie, like stuff like that. I feel like as a Chinese kid, you always have to be like, hi, auntie, all that at Chinese New Year and all that. I guess I was really nervous in that moment, like picking up the stuff from my ex's mom and like didn't remember to say hello or maybe I didn't even, I feel like I said hello, but I didn't say hello, auntie, which is probably why I got in trouble. So anyways, that is a long winded story to explain that I really don't like to see hierarchy in social relationships and same thing with when I am working with kids I feel like I'm very casual and that is how I build trust easily with these kids and I'm able to work with them so well is that like I also show that I am vulnerable and I build a very like trusting relationship with them when do you feel healthiest so I feel my healthiest when I'm eating balanced and healthy, not always eating out or eating all processed food, going to the gym regularly. There's a balance between relaxed time alone and working, reading, healthy online consumption, hydrating, and taking care of hygiene. I feel like this past year, self-care has been like the most important thing and I'm really good at it now. So I I would say I live a very healthy lifestyle which is very like, I think I've worked really hard to build this healthy lifestyle. So I'm very proud of myself for that. And uh, those are just kind of the things that I really want to work towards and have worked towards. I think I achieve a lot of it and it's good. Pretty simple. How often do you compare yourself to others? So nowadays I don't compare myself as often as before. Before when I was little as a teenager, when I, you know, first got social media and stuff, I would constantly compare myself. I always remember when I was like 13 or 14 and I followed Alexis Ren on Instagram and I was always so insecure about myself because like obviously she's a model and she's really pretty. And I was like, oh my God, why am I not white? Why am I not pretty like her? Like stuff like that. And it was just really not good for me. But now I can healthily consume social media without feeling like garbage. And um, I would say the only time that I compare myself to others is when I am working towards something and someone else has it. So for example, one thing that I'm working towards is wanting to move out. And I would say like I compare myself to either peers that I have that have moved out and live on their own or like people on the internet that have that. 
and can't afford that. And I get really jealous sometimes. But I just have to remember that everyone's on their own track and I will get there eventually. So that's definitely when I compare myself online. Um, Also when like someone else has experienced fast growth on their social media and like I haven't yet. That's fine. I'm okay with it. Just sometimes I get in a little bit of a spiral, but it's fine. Okay, the last question I am going to do is a little bit of a hard hitter, and I did it this morning, actually, so let's get to it. I actually kind of want to do more. I might pick out some more from the book later that I haven't answered, but anyways, the next question was basically to write down all of your life goals and to categorize them and pick kind of one overarching goal in the career category, personal growth category, and relationship category, so Let's go over all of my life goals first. This is obviously like everything that I could think of this morning. Like I feel like if I go back and I record right now, I'm going to think of more that I haven't written down. But here's what I have. Graduate university, move out on my own, build my social media platforms, balance time with friends and alone, get a sponsor for a podcast episode, make content that I'm truly proud of, maintain a healthy lifestyle, learn to be a good partner to Jerry, get a full-time job that is flexible and makes me passionate slash motivated, travel on a solo trip and set boundaries firmly. So I feel like there's like a different, like a big mix of like actual tangible goals and um, more like fluid goals. I don't know if that's the word, but you know, goals that don't really like have a yes, you passed or no, you failed um, and are just more about the traits that I want to have. So I basically kind of categorized those into my career goal, which is to continue to build my social media platforms and get sponsors slash brands to work with me. I don't know if I want to be like an influencer. It's definitely not like I I wouldn't say I want to be an influencer in the typical definition of what they look like now just because there are some aspects of the job that I don't really agree with and I don't think that I would love. But I also think that like I have a really special opportunity with a platform to share different opinions, experiences, like learning opportunities and stuff like that. So it would be really nice to continue to grow my platform and just be able to share my opinions and what I've learned in life with the people that are curious to learn about it. And then also to get sponsors and brands. I have worked with a couple brands before, but I think it is really cool when like you get to work with brands that you've that have been like a household name for you for a long time. That's probably one of the most rewarding experiences. And um, I think it's just very, it's like a really cool opportunity that is very, like is changing a lot in modern society. I mean, like nowadays social media and brands makes it so accessible for the regular consumer. Like, I don't know if you guys are on TikTok, but for me, like a big part of my TikTok for you page is like, brands are commenting on videos and they it just sounds like they're a regular person but like they're commenting from like their like tinder account or whatever like i know obviously like that it is one person that's managing the social media platforms and stuff like that but to have these brands feel so accessible and normal is really cool and i think it is changing every day with this kind of digital media kind of stuff and i think it'd be really cool to work with a brand i don't know how like else I can say it. I just think it's really cool. Okay. My personal growth right now, my goal is to move out on my own and maintain a healthy lifestyle when I do. This one is a work in progress, obviously, but hopefully somehow I can find a job that pulls in enough income or I can just make enough income on my own to be able to afford to move out. Right now I'm really looking at living in a studio because I think it's so cool. But I hope that I can move out, first of all, and then also when I move out, I'm still able to have this healthy lifestyle. And I think I am because I'm like pretty disciplined, but we'll see. I mean, I hope like once I move out, I don't like become a slob or whatever because that would not be fun. But I hope that I become even more disciplined, to be honest, because I think I could improve. Like I'm pretty good at, you know, getting work done and doing whatever. But like one thing that I'm really bad at is cleaning. I'm really not disciplined with cleaning. And also I'm like not a super clean person. Like I am an organized person for sure. You can see my pencil case, you know, color coded or whatever. But I am not a clean person, which is not good. 
and I really want to be a better clean person because I think it's really important because it's like your space reflects how you're doing and also I want to be treating myself with the nicest space possible so I want to make sure that I can be clean and my relationship goal is to continue to learn to be a good partner slash friend over the past year and a bit that I've been dating Jerry I've learned a lot about like working with someone else to build a relationship and how to compromise and how to sacrifice and stuff like that and I think I've learned a lot and but like I know for sure that I still have to improve because there are a lot of things you know when you just bring together two people that have different upbringings like you're bound to have conflicts and that's totally fine conflicts are totally normal but it's just about what you do in response to that that is important you know are you one to just like be stubborn and not change or do you want to compromise with your partner and stuff like that I think that's very important and I think I'm working on it but definitely need to improve for sure I can still be better and I think that just comes with time too like that's not something that I could put in five hours today and be better right away like I think it comes with growth it comes with maturity and it comes with time so these, this goal is more so like for the long term, I would say, versus like my personal and career growth are probably for like the next two to three years. Relationship goal is definitely like for hopefully the rest of my life. And um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. This is my journal, by the way. I'm about to finish it. So it's pretty full and there's a lot of pages, but it's a Lloyd's term. It's an orange Lloyd's term. And I bought the little pen loop that sticks at the back just because I like to attach a pencil in case I go outside and do my journaling. Um, but it's decorated with a bunch of Red Bull stickers, Red Bull, Red Bubble stickers, sorry. Um, mostly Animal Crossing, but also just like cute things that I like, like coffee and cacti. I will show you my next journal as well because I'm probably going to finish this within the end of the month and then I get to move on to my next journal, which I'm really excited about. So this is my next journal. It is also a Lloyd's term. It is a matcha green one, which I'm really excited about. This was the color that I was debating for my bullet journal when I was buying one at the time, but I decided to go with brown for my bullet journal. So I went with green for my next journal and it has a couple stickers on it right now, but I want to continue to grow my collection kind of organically basically before when I bought my stickers for my last journal, I bought them all at once and it was kind of just like, just to decorate but I want to collect stickers that like actually mean something to me and like have experiences and stories so I have a couple on here right now and then I also bought a little pen loop for my pen to stick in but this is a very nice journal because it's brand new very excited to open this next week and start writing in it Otherwise, that's going to be it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I really enjoyed answering these questions and just like talking about life. So I will see you in my next episode. Bye. And I was like, yo.